Hello world, welcome to A Champion's Online Guide. Today I'm going to talk about the Glacier, which is a frosty ranged tank. As usual, I went with the heirloom gear because, well, I'm lazy and I don't really want to bother with gear while I'm leveling, since I don't have to. It does make leveling this particular character much more painful since you really need that extra recovery. Ice attacks are pretty expensive, maybe with the exception of Ice Blast, but mostly they haven't been looked at for a very, very long time, so they're much more expensive than newer powers for the damage they do. As for the Kevin Poe fight, well, you're a tank. You could face tank the whole fight. There's nothing to say special about it. Just block his life drain and hit him in the face with Ice Blast. That's it. That's That's the whole fight. You might not even need to heal just because you have more than enough health. For leveling, I used Frost Breath, which is actually pretty good. I kept the advantage Frostbite, and I did full maintains on mobs, and it really is pretty good for crowd control. I often had multiple enemies frozen or chilled. Frost Breath guarantees the chill effect, so if anything's alive at the end of my maintain, if maybe just one enemy or one or two, I can use Ice Blast with Hard Frost to break them down pretty quick. Hard Frost with Ice Blast Tap Spam does more damage than Ice Blast at rank 3 when you're tapping. So I like to use that. It's a nice little power. Also, Ice Shards with an Ice Impaler, it gives it an extra critical hit chance. You probably end up using your Energy Builder quite a bit so that extra 15% critical hit chance with Adrenaline Rush is a nice way to heal yourself. You're not going to have a whole lot of critical hit chance, especially if you're lazy like I am and use Nemesis gear. But that little bit really helps if you want to use like some Nemesis gear and some gear that gives you extra critical hit chance while you're leveling. That would be a really nice option so you could stay healed just a little bit more and still be able to do damage. The one thing you have to be aware of is concentration only builds stacks if you maintain a power or charge a power up more than halfway or if you're 25 feet away. So if you're doing ice blast taps, you have to be aware of how far away the enemies are to your character. Otherwise, you're never going to gain concentration stacks. And you really need that health is very, or that energy is very important since you're probably going to be starved for energy. Ice powers are expensive. Ice Blast is probably the cheapest one only because it's the only one of the powers that's being looked at for a long time. My gear and mods are a little bit better than normal only because I found an amazing deal on constitution mods. I'm very sure that someone forgot to add a zero to that sell price, so I ended up with quite a few rank 5 constitution mods, so I shoved them all in my gear. But what I was really looking for was enough dexterity and crit chance to keep myself healed, not like amazing amounts, but enough that I do heal fairly well. It's one of the things I wanted to invest in to take advantage of Adrenaline Rush. Having more crits means more damage, which means more aggro and more healing. Works out well. Another thing is I invested more into endurance and some recovery just because I didn't like having to hit the energy builder so many times before I could use my real powers again. Four or five times is excessive as far as I'm concerned. Two or three hits, I can see that, especially being an archetype. They're not exactly the most efficient things. But I don't want to sit there forever because the energy builder does not really generate any aggro and I'm a tank. I need to be able to tank. The Glacier is a good tankity tank and you have some really nice options to heal yourself. With minimal investment in dexterity and critical hit chance you can probably get between 20 and 30 percent just from gear and mods. Plus you have a few powers that have advantages that increase your critical hit chance which is really nice. I mean critical hit for healing and for doing more damage. It's pretty much a win-win situation. Even your energy builder has an increased critical hit chance, and chances are you're going to be using your energy builder quite a bit, especially while leveling. Adrenaline Rush doesn't care how much damage your crits do, it just cares that they exist, and then you heal yourself for 4 or so percent of your health. Since you have Constitution as your primary superstat, you're going to have a lot of health. 
so it works out well. And Avalanche with an extra critical hit chance, you roll into a big mob, you just Avalanche away. Really nice. Even without investing heavily into Dexterity. There's a little bit of flexibility in the build and how you create it. I chose to go with Ice Blast and Hard Frost for the most part. I kept the Frostbite advantage on Frost Breath so that it applied chill even on tap. While leveling, Frost Breath was really good for freezing and chilling an entire mob group, which is great. After that, I could choose to shatter if I wanted to go for a shatter build. So it's, it's nice and flexible that way. And of course, Ice Barrier, if you use that, you have like lots of things to shatter. I chose to go with Ice Blast and Hard Frost since Hard Frost does a ton of damage. Sometimes I do the shattering just for the fun of it, I mean why not? You do get energy when you shatter things, I don't know, it's there, I might as well use it every once in a while. Unbreakable is a great active defense. If you are taking too much damage, you can use Unbreakable and essentially you'll heal yourself because you can just keep attacking. Unbreakable prevents you from taking very much damage or significantly increases your resistance to damage and say you're just in a group of mods, it's a little bit too much, you hit Unbreakable, you're using Avalanche, you're probably going to heal quite a bit, which is nice since you have no other heals. Ice Barrier, I went with that. It, I really never use it for defensive purposes, I just do it because it looks fun and then I shatter it. I pretty much set up an Ice Barrier all the way up to rank 3, which I think gives you 6 little spires by you and then I shatter them because well why not it amuses me and the other option is ice burst which is okay but ice berry gives me more things to shatter so I went with that ice burst would be good for crowd control but I already felt like there was more than enough just from frost breath with frostbite provided me with more than enough crowd control freezing and chilling that I wanted and ice burst can be annoying since it knocks things away, and well, I hate knockaways, so I don't really go with that. Like with every archetype, there are some things that are just icky about the glacier. For instance, those horrible, horrible energy issues that happened the entire time I was leveling, even at 40. Just so I wouldn't have to rely on my energy builder, which last I checked does not generate aggro, I needed to invest in recovery didn't feel optional to me. Two or three hits with the energy builder would be fine, but I was hitting four or five times in a row between attacks. That's not really good for keeping aggro, and being a tank I want all of the aggro, all of it. Which doesn't happen if I'm sitting there with my energy builder. And holy crap, Nox. That 10 strength does not give you any knock resistance. Even with resilience, which should give you knock resistance based on your constitution, didn't feel like it was helping. On the other hand, enemy knocks in the game, especially in alerts, is pretty insane. I had a strength tank, had quite a bit of strength, and was still getting knocked around like a ragdoll. So it's hard to say if it's because of the lack of strength this archetype has, or if it's just because enemy knocks are absolutely insane. One of the things that bugged me was the need to invest in non-super stats. Okay, I can see you can't really do anything and investing, say, in dexterity and critical strikes is useful and fine. But also having to invest in recovery, which is not one of my super stats, this just seems like sloppy. That should really be, some of that shit stuff should be handled by the build. It is a tank, so having that ego isn't really necessary. If I had recovery instead of ego, I would be investing more in ego with having better energy returns and still gaining damage because you are investing in super stamp. So I don't understand why they even bothered including ego instead of recovery or even dexterity, which both would have been better options as far as I'm concerned. They both would have helped the glacier build a lot more than ego does, especially since ego is not your primary super stat. Overall, the glacier is a good tank. It does what it does well. It's not very often that I lost aggro to other players, but there are those people with insanely high DPS that you just cannot out aggro their damage. It happens, not often, so yeah, you'll be able to tank and not feel worthless most of the time. 
And even if you don't have aggro, you lose it to another tank or someone with really high damage, you could still have fun hitting things in the face with ice blast, shattering things, all good times. And of course there is that horrible downside of energy management issues which really should have been addressed within the build itself. Biggest drawback, and since recovery mods are super cheap, you can easily compensate for that, even if it means losing damage since you're not investing in your super stack. 